Good afternoon, everyone, friends of Waterfront Botanical Gardens and the Food Literacy Project. It is time for Facebook Live and our Garden to Fork Culinary Series. Today we are here at Iroquois Urban Farm and we will be talking with some members of the Food Literacy Project and to introduce you, the community, to the Youth Community Agriculture Program and the community food leaders here at the farm. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone. Hopefully everyone can hear us um, very well. We will be doing chat both from um, our Facebook page at Waterfront Botanical Gardens as well as from the Food Literacy Project. So if you have any questions, feel free to type them in. I know my phone is down to 15%, so hopefully if you have questions, it's the first thing that you ask um, before my battery dies out. But we're very happy to be here. Um, because of the coronavirus, we originally had the um, community food leaders going to come out to the Avish at our vegetable garden beds there back in May, but because of the shutdown, um, we had to um, cancel that, but we're glad that we're doing this virtually and remotely today so we can see what everyone is doing here at Iroquois Urban Farm. So without further ado, um, I should introduce myself. I'm Jamie Burkhart, Director of Horticulture and Education at Waterfront Botanical Gardens. And without further ado, I would like to introduce Grace Mikan with the Food Literacy Project. Hey everybody, I'm Grace Mikan or Grace Green Pepper when I'm out here on the farm. We are so excited to have you all out here, even though it's through a screen. Um, we're so excited to show you what we've got growing on here and of course cook a really delicious recipe with you all. Um, it has been an absolute honor and privilege to work with this crew of community food leaders and so I'm just going to turn it on over to them so you can see for yourself how amazing and wonderful they are. First up, we've got Marissa Mango leading us on a farm tour. Hello guys, how's it going? So today I'll be giving a virtual live farm tour about our property. So this is Iroquois Urban Farm. It used to be the Iroquois Projects homing community um, property, but we turned it into a greenhouse um, or green area for the community. So if we look over here, um these are two fields that we barely even use because this area like floods a lot um but we're trying to prep it now and we're trying to like give it a try to like plant and grow some crops so hopefully later we can like, get some crops um right now we're sitting where um uh, we have group meetings we have little tree stumps over here um or we can just come over here and get some shade so if we walk over here, um, this might seem like there's nothing here, but there's new salad mitts coming in right here. Um, so hopefully the salad mitts, you know, germinate and grow. Mm -hmm. there, I don't think there's nothing over here. Um, if we look over there, all the way over there, you see people um, doing like growing and stuff. Um, that's the Hope Farm. And what they do, they um, grow crops. And when they grow crops, they have like the CSA where like you can like spend a certain amount of money a year. And when you spend a certain amount of money a year, um, they'll give you a, like a bunch of vegetables that year. Um, we're prepping. I think this is also salad mitts here too. It might not look it, but it's gonna come soon. But that's how that's how the fields is in. How you uh, plant the salad mitts? You make divots. Um, divots are over here. So if I show you the divot, we're waiting for germination right here to come through. But this is the divot. So what you do is you take a shovel and then you make the divots and then you like have like a dice motion like this of the seeds in your hand and you just dice it around and then this is how this is how it looks um this is how your salamence should look um over here we have more salad mints but this is volunteer so this wasn't purpose purposely um planted here this was we planted these last year but then they came up this year on their own we all we have watermelon in these like tall 
small grass right here, and we also had cucumber over here. Um, and then we have squash over here. And also the, we got different types of variety of salamis. We have radish lettuce. We have regular lettuce. We have mustards. We have purple mustards. We have kale. And I think that's it. Um, and there's a volunteer pepper, pepper grass over there. And you can, that's also edible. This is zucchini and squash. Zucchini's over here. Squash is over there. If you look closely, closely here, there is a zucchini right there. You want it to like die right here. There go, there go a little grasshopper right there on top. But um, you want it, this flower to completely die, and uh, it should be ready to pick. This one looks like it's ready to pick. It looks like it's completely done. Um, the squash over here. Squash right here. This little mini squash right here. It looked like the plant's dead, but we want it a little bit bigger. We want it huge. Um, so I'm about to take you guys on a little detour. And what I'm about to show you guys is a surprise but um i can give you a hint it's from an animal um and it helps the dirt so if you guys like know the answer y'all can just drop the answer down in the chat and then uh whoever gets the first answer i guess wins but while while we're making a detour there we can just talk about squash and what um what are, like, what are some things y'all do with squash and zucchini? I know I make squash and zucchini together and bake it in the oven, put some seasoning on it. Um, there go a little kale plant right here and another one. Um, there go a really huge squash plant grown. And then there go a purple mustard. There are a few purple mustard over here um this is our storage unit um storage this is where we store everything that we use here on the farm and there's something in the storage unit that i'm going to be showing y'all later that might interest you guys but we almost there to the manure well i, mean, well, I just gave y'all the answer but i guess i hope one of y'all can uh I hope one of y'all guessed the answer to the manure. And we also passed in a uh, whole corn. They got a little corn growing. Um, I think they're getting like the three sisters ready. So the three sisters is squash, beans, and corn. Um, you grow it together. You put the squash in the middle, and then you put the corn on the sides. And when you put the corn on the sides, the beans, the squash leaves are supposed to cover up the, the beans and the weeds, and the weeds should die. This is the manure pile right here. It's not uncovered, but it's chicken manure. This is what we use to, for the dirt. So, cause there's nitrogen in chicken manure and the nitrogen helps the dirt. And so since this used to be a, like an apartment building like over here, like the dirt's kind of rough. So we use this to make the dirt kind of smooth and have like a little nitrogen in it for the plants to grow. Um, the, back to the three sisters. The three sisters is um, squash, beans, and corn. You plant the squash in the middle. Then you put the corn on the sides. And when you put the corn on the sides, you also put the beans on the sides. The squash leaves is supposed to help the um, corn grow and so it covers up the ground and make it dark so the weeds can die um and we walk over here we got a couple of greenhouses coming up this is part of hope farm um i don't know what they got in there growing right now but um they use it i'm pretty sure they use it but then there's also trees in front of their greenhouses 
And I know a little bit about these trees because I was here whenever they were dropping them off. Halloween of last year. Um, these trees, they, they, what they do is they take these trees to like parks or they take them to uh, different people's houses in the community. Then they plant these trees in their yards or in the parks around the community. And we used to go to the save a lot up here in front of on um, Bicknell and we used to you know sell the plants but due to COVID we just been giving it away to families in need and to people that need food uh, which is also very good and very helpful for the community um, then we then we can walk over here to the greenhouse this is our greenhouse um, I think there's some things growing in there. I'm not for sure, but I know we used to use it a lot um, last summer and like last fall and stuff. Um, but we also come in here for like group meetings and stuff because there's little hay beds in here. Um, but we about to walk in there. Um, if you guys don't know what these black things are on the greenhouse, that's where in like the gutters, like if, if it rains, the rainwater like comes through and the black uh, containers collect the rainwater. And when it collects the rainwater, you can use that water for the plant. Just, you know, recycle some water. It won't hurt. Mercy, right. we have a question. Are there any plants that you learn to grow or you enjoy growing more at during the different times of years? What are your, some of your favorites or What's exciting to you when it comes to planting? Um, I would say the lettuce, cause I didn't. I thought you had to bury the the seeds, and you don't have to bury seeds when you plant some lettuce. Um, garlic was a tough one. I didn't know that um it was gonna be hard to pull up. Um, and just I never seen herbs like this herb right here. Um, this is sage. I never seen herbs like on a plant. So at, since I started working here, um, I think we got a little. I think we got a little. Green. I think we got a little green back here. Okay, we got a little green back here. See, I'm not sure what this. I think it's lettuce. See, I'm a bold one. See, so I can just, you know, pick it up off the and taste it. That's how I am. But, um, I think it's lettuce. I'm not for sure. I think it's lettuce. But I can just bring it closer to y'all to the camera. I mean, but this, these two look a little different. So this could be the lettuce part. I don't know what this is. But um we 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 planted this. Um this could be volunteer maybe because I don't remember planting new things in here. This used to be Oh, it's it's you use this in spaghetti. Uh I think it's cilantro. I think it's cilantro. Maybe, maybe a, it's a type of oregano. 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 It's oregano. That's what it is. That I don't even know. But if we walk back here, we have a nice, healthy compost pile. Um, I'm the one that turned it yesterday. Um, this is our compost pile. Uh, we see there's a couple of like banana peelings, eggshells. You want you want brown and green together. You don't want more brown than green. So you want brown and green together. Also, if you have any scraps out there at home and if you live close here, you can drop them off here and throw it in the compost. Um, what would be some examples of what would be a brown addition to the compost versus um, the green? I know most of y'all drink coffee out there, so if y'all have like coffee 
um, filter or coffee grinder things. You can throw that in there. You can put, uh, looks to me like this is a paper tray. You can use um, old egg carton trays. You can use your eggshells. You can use um, vegetable scraps that you don't use. You can use like leftover vegetable foods that y'all didn't eat and come over here and throw it in here. So this is welcome to anybody because we want more stuff in our compost for it to be healthier so we can use for the dirt also. So this is something else that can be used for the plants. So, um, I, I seen a guy one day over here on a motorcycle. I think there's like beehives back there, I guess. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, yeah, beehive right there. <laughs> he uses that or whatever. Um, then, if we walk over here, here are my crew members. Um, you can see them from the far distance, but we're going to get close. Um, they're right next to a learning garden, and the learning garden, when, before COVID, we would, like, kids would come on the farm, and we would use the learning garden for them to learn, and when they learn, um, they, like, they can also pick and eat, like, one time, a kid came, he didn't know, he never had a tomato. He thought I was trying to kill him with the tomato, but I, I made, like, I, he actually had the tomato and he actually liked it, which really put a smile on my face. Um, I'm going to show y'all a couple of vegetables, um, on the, the learning garden. And then I'm also showing y'all Jasmine Jalapeno. She's going to be harvesting basil. So if she can show y'all how to harvest that thing. And again, Marissa, you're Marissa Mango, right? Mm -hmm. I'm Marissa Mango. So did you get to choose your own name or was it assigned to you or how does that work? Um, when I came here, they said that you can either use your name and find your favorite vegetable or use your name and find a vegetable that starts with the same letter as your first name. So I like mango, so I put mango, and it's got an M, and my name got an M, so I put it together. Um, so we're here, Jasmine Jalapeno. Hi, I'm and Jasmine we're... Jalapeno. Um, I'm gonna be harvesting basil for the recipes I'm gonna be doing later. So usually we just like take a couple leaves and like chop them up and put them in our recipes. So I think I'll take like two different varieties, maybe I guess. Looks like you've got a regular green leaf and now you're in the purple leaf basil. Yeah, one's lemon basil. Oh, lemon basil, okay. And how do you know how much basil to pick for your recipe? Do you just Usually, kind of overpick? Sometimes it's by like, um, by taste kind of. Okay. Like just add whatever, um, whatever you want to add to by taste, I guess, whatever you prefer. So, we got basil. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna just, you know, talk about the different basils. I know Jasmine talked about a little bit um, I call this purple basil because it's purple. This one's green. It's not purple at all. Um, if I have to pick which one's my favorite, I'll probably pick the purple. Um, we had a, we have tomatoes growing. Um, it hasn't turned green, I mean red yet. And that one was just demolished by bugs and animals. There is more lemon basil. Um, so if y'all are ever, you know, like confused on what it is, if you look and there's like a purple lavender flower on it, this is lemon basil. Um, but if it's like purple it's like that, then it's just purple basil. Lemon basil it smells great because I can smell it through my face mask. Mm -hmm. It's like I'm glad I'm a little downwind. Yes, yes, it does smell great, and it also tastes good. Um, so if y'all haven't had basil before, I recommend. This is green beans. Um, if I can, if I can find a green bean real fast to to harvest, Here's and they're going right here. That's. If it looks like that, then it's ready. Um. 
There's more green beans. There's more lemon basil. And they're going to squash right here with a little squash, a little baby squash on it. And this, this one's actually ready to be picked. Because the flower's dead. So if it's like dying and like comes off, then it looks... So it's ready to be picked, so you can use this for salad. This used to be blueberries, but it just, it just never worked, to be honest with you. So it just never worked. Here is more green beans. So we have tons of green beans. They come through a lot. There's more green beans. Here's another tomato plant. With a little tomato. There go um, tomato right there. Two of them. And then there go another one. Here's more lemon basil. See, I don't think that was purposely there. I think it just spread. Here is more green beans, basil, and look at that little look at that little baby squash right there coming in. There go more. There go more basil and then more green beans. Oh, see, there go little baby green beans right here. little baby green beans right there i don't think y'all ever seen little baby green beans before i don't know what this is but it's uh got a little purple flower in it and it's very pretty here's more basil and then i think this whole thing's full of basil to be honest with you i don't think that's purposely there either but um Thank you for joining me today on my farm tour. I appreciate it. Uh, if y'all have, if you guys have any questions, I'm gonna be around. I'm gonna be around to answer. So I'm gonna lead it off on to Grace again. Thank you so much, Grace and Mango. That was an awesome tour. Um, while we were walking around the farm, Ruby Radish was busy harvesting from our salad planting for the recipes we'll be making today. Um, and I'm gonna turn it over to the crew leading us on the recipes. We've got Fatma fruit and jasmine jalapeno, and I think Fatma's gonna kick it off for us. <laughs> Hello, I'm Fatma fruit, and I've been working with YCAP for about a year now, a little over a year. And I'm gonna show you one of my favorite fresh potato soup recipes. So first we're gonna add about four tablespoons of oil or butter, whatever you have into your pan. your vegetables and what I have here is about three fist-sized potatoes one and a half cups of onion two large carrots and two celery stalks As you're stirring, what do you think, how long will it take um, to get everything coated um, in the oil and, and as it's cooking? Usually it'll take about one to three minutes, depending on like the, how many potatoes you're using and things like that, and the size of your pan. And again, how many potatoes or how much pound of those potatoes did you cut up? I cut up three this size potatoes. Mm -hmm. Um, about two carrots and two celery stalks and one and a half cups of onion. And in the end, this will serve how many do you think? I'd say about three, four people, but okay. you can always add stuff to the recipe, whatever your favorite vegetables are, or you can double or triple it if you're serving more people. I'm going to add a little bit of salt.
we've got one comment already that says it looks so yummy already and I can attest I can smell really the good. oil and everything starting to cook and it's it's good So once the vegetables are coated with oil, I will add about two cups of veggie stock. But if you don't have veggie stock, you can use um, bouillon or like chicken stock. That's a good alternative if you're not vegan or vegetarian. And after I start stirring this up, I'll try to bring it to a boil. So I'll turn the heat up. And then once that turns to a boil, I'll put it down to a simmer and cover it for about 25 minutes or until the potatoes are soft. All right, I'll turn it on to Jasmine Jalapeno. Hi, um, I'm Jasmine Jalapeno. Um, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make two different healthy um, dressings for like a salad or whatever you have. So we, we're gonna put, um, we have mason jars that we're gonna use, and I have two, one for honey mustard dressing and one for healthy ranch. And it's really simple, it's kind of a, um, the first one, the honey mustard uh, dressing, it's gonna be like it's equal parts, I guess. And all you need are honey, mustard, olive oil, and apple cider vinegar. So um, we're gonna start off with, um, Oh, and I'm you could use we're using one fourth cup of like everything. So I'm using a um, a mason jar with the measurements on it. But if you don't have that, you can use a, a cup measure or whatever you please. So I'm gonna fill this uh, mason jar with honey till about the two on this mason jar for a fourth of a cup of honey. So you're using apple cider vinegar with the honey. So in general, this is a very sweet. Yeah, it, dressing. Um, it, it's like uh, kind of acidic, but it's not. It like tastes to me. It tastes like really good. Mm -hmm. Kind of uh, balance it out, I guess. I didn't think it would, but it does. Um, next, we're gonna use a fourth cup of honey honey mustard. Uh oh. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's, that's exciting. <laughs> Love that. Um, if you, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> One fourth cup of mustard. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. It's just the kitchen. Accidents happen all the time. Right. Um, next we have um, a fourth cup of olive oil. And last but not least, we have apple cider vinegar. Notice how the um, there's different levels. In the, to um, we're gonna make it all come together when we uh, shake it up, which is the last step to your honey mustard recipe. So you're just gonna shake it really good. It's really orange. <laughs> I promise it tastes delicious. And will you keep the dressing in that jar? Like, so if you don't use everything in their salad today, will you keep mm -hmm. it in that jar? Uh, yeah, you can refrigerate it and use it for like another salad another day and just keep it in your mason jar. How long would that last in the refrigerator? Do you uh, think? I just did one like last week and it's still lasting. So I guess like a month maybe. Okay. So yeah. Uh, next we're going to do our healthy ranch. It's kind of healthy. Like we use um, Greek yogurt instead of like whatever else you use for ranch. <laughs> Um, okay, I'll use about 
First we have a cup of Greek yogurt. So I'm gonna need to mix this up. Cause, oh, okay. Getting messy with Jazza, that's what we should call this. <laughs> now Jazza, when you started um, with the Food Industry Project, did you have certain vegetables that you were interested in or you enjoyed learning about or growing more than others? Yeah. Um, so far, I really like the, um, I think Marissa Mango got, told you guys about it, but the lettuce, mm -hmm. um, I didn't know that it was like, so just like genuinely fun to like, um, plant and harvest. I really love, like my favorite food is like a salad. So whenever we're just out there on the farm and it's like fun to harvest, mm -hmm. I guess it's kind of easy to harvest, not hard. And it's really simple. Just like this recipe. Right. Okay. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay. <laughs> Love that. Um, next, we have two tablespoons of olive oil, apple cider vinegar. My bad. Gonna do two of these. we have a tablespoon of olive oil. We, um, next for our seasonings, we're gonna have salt. Uh, I think Fafna has the salt, so. About a teaspoon of salt or you could use like a pinch whatever just have a teaspoon so yeah you can just use like half or whatever whatever you prefer next we have um, onion powder I usually love the onion powder it really gives it that um, ranch taste to it to me so it says for like half a teaspoon, but I usually do a little more. It's because it adds more flavor. But whatever you prefer, again, and you can keep tasting while you um, add your parts to the um, the ranch to see um, what you prefer and how like how much you need and all that. And now we have garlic powder. looks like you prefer the onion powder over the garlic powder so yeah it really gives it that like ranch flavor mm -hmm. and just tastes like you won't even can't really tell it's like a different healthy ranch um and next we have the herbs that we harvested in the learning garden um you can chop it up but i'm just gonna take little bits and pieces i have some basil here that i'm gonna use for the the ranch all right Shake this up. That's really good. And there we have healthy ranch. So, and you can put these on your salads or whatever you prefer to use them with. And yeah, healthy ranch for Jasmine. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. cooking, huh, Fadma? Mm -hmm. So our potato soup has started to boil. I'll show it. And I'm just going to put it on simmer soon and leave that there for 20 to 25 minutes just until the potatoes get soft. Mm -hmm. Turning it down. And after that, when it's done simmering, I will take it off the heat, put some minced garlic in here which I have right here and I will mash it up or you can puree it if you have a blender with some milk and then when I'm done with that I will put it back on the burner and add kale and more seasonings and once the kale is wilted you can enjoy so far have you stuck a fork in them or anything yeah they're definitely not ready 
we need some more time. Yeah. Cool. Well, um, maybe we could talk about some other like recipes that we've made on the farm together. Some other things that you remember, like cooking with the kids in the field of pork clubs or. Um, I know one of my personal favorites, and it is the season indeed, pork kale pancakes. That's like an all-time favorite of mine. Um, so what do you all remember like from our, our times at club or any other recipes that we've made together this season? Um, chips and salsa. Uh, we like, we, I didn't know you could like homemade chips. I guess like, you can obviously make chips, but I've never done it before, which was really cool. And I could tell the kids loved it and it was enjoyable to make and the salsa, which was really good. So. My favorite was probably the pizza with all the veggies on it, um, especially because fall veggies are so good and putting all those veggies on a pizza or the pasta. The pasta is really good too, like the homemade pasta sauce with the fresh vegetables is always the best. Mm -hmm. Totally. Um, we could also take a look at our crew. They're doing a little bit more harvesting out in the field. Today we're getting some zucchini and summer squash. Um, we're also doing a little extra salad harvest so that everybody on the crew can have a big salad for dinner if they want it. Um, we could also talk about this cob oven over here. So Klasma mentioned pizza and this is like the original pizza oven. <laughs> um, out here at Airquake Urban Farm we don't have electricity so we kind of have to adjust you seeing that we're cooking on those portable burners today. Um, but this is a way for us to use an oven without any electricity. Um, so this is made out of cob. Cob is a material that is a blend of sand, straw, and clay. Um, and so what you do is you kind of build a mound and then start piling this cob on top. And the reason why we use this material is because it uh, keeps, it holds heat really well. Um, so then when we actually go to cook in this oven, oh, and these are uh, like heat retaining bricks as well. Um, so when we actually go to use this oven, we'll build a little fire on the inside and let it burn for like an hour or two. Then we'll scrape it all out and then bake something like pizza. We did pizza rolls for an event last year. Um, How long did those take today? The pizza rolls took like three minutes. It was crazy because this seriously does retain heat so well um, that it really cooks fast. And so that's been a fun tool for us out here as we work with our, work with our environment. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I think those potatoes are going to need a little bit longer and maybe we could talk about what our next steps are for the soup and kind of wrap it up from there. Unless anybody is cooking at home and has questions about um, any of the steps in the recipes or anything you all have seen out on the farm today, just let us know. Once the potatoes are soft, I will add in the garlic after I take it off of heat. And let's see, I'll put this kale in. But you can also add other greens too, because the more greens means more nutrients. And then I'll mash it up, but you could obviously use a blender or um, whatever you have to puree it with a cup and a half of milk. Um, and I will add these seasonings, onion powder and garlic powder and Another option is like if you want it spicy, you could add chili powder or hot sauce. Those are my two favorite things to add. Um, so you can just season to a taste and then enjoy it with your family. It's a good fall recipe. What um, milk are you using there? Is that whole, one, two percent? This is whole milk. You can add whatever milk you'd want. It would taste good with any milk. Um, a good, um, the, for me, the best thing that tastes like whole milk, if you wanted it to taste like whole milk, is oat milk because it's a lot thicker. But you can use almond milk or cashew milk or anything like that. Cool. Well, thank you all so much for leading this in those, yeah, I think very popular fan favorite recipes um, out here at the Food Literacy Project. Um, maybe we could do a little check back in so y'all could see the final product. Um, but we really just appreciate you so much joining us on our tour and cooking demonstration today. I hope you all have enjoyed it. You've done a great job, everyone here. And um, for a gift for Good Louisville last week, you um, at Food Literacy Project had some great donations and stuff like that. And again, is there any more information that if you do want to become more involved with supporting the programs here at Food Literacy Project, um, what can um, our viewers um, do? Is there anywhere particularly you'd like yeah, to direct them absolutely. to? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, 
find us online, www.foodliteracyproject.org, and you will find plenty of information about how you can donate as little as the cost of a cup of coffee, and that will provide fresh veggies for our Field of Fork Club students, for example, who get a share of what's grown here at the farm every week when we are in, in a session with that Field of Fork Club. Um, if you donate more, you're supporting the wages for the crew who have led us in these amazing uh, tour and recipes today. Um, so really it all helps and we hope you'll check us out online. Um, and of course, follow our Facebook for more events coming soon. Zach, thank you very much for being behind the camera. Come on in, let's have a look at how the farm fresh potato soup is boiling right now. It smells amazing. It looks good. Yeah, it looks probably about another 10, 15 minutes for those potatoes to really look soft before you would mash and or put them in a blender. Definitely thank everyone. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the tour today. Um, hopefully we can kick the coronavirus as soon as possible. And so our farm to garden or fork, garden to fork um, culinary series with Waterfront Botanical Gardens can continue in which it would allow people to come and actually interact with our um, youth chefs. We're definitely gonna have the Food Literacy Project and their community youth um, food leaders be involved with us out at the Avish or even at the Botanical Garden site um, when things get better. So again, thank you very much. And maybe we'll check back in in a few more minutes to see how the potato soup is brewing.